Welcome back to the tangent. We're here again with our good friends Devin, hey, yo, Tim, hey, and Harrison, hi, and myself James. Today we are going to discuss a topic called the movies that made us. I know, going to get copyright infringement on that one. Yeah, probably. We, we should have totally come up with a different name. Well, probably. But either way, we're the just movies gonna... that made us, but different. <laughs> the movies that is made the name. you. Okay, we'll, we'll change that to the movies that influenced us. Yeah, how's that? Okay. That How about good. just some movies we feel like talking about today? Yeah, All right, so that, I like that. Yeah, that Let's too. just get to it. Anyway, so basically, I wanted to talk about a couple of movies that like influenced our lives in some way, shape, or form. Whether it's just, it was a good movie, and we just continue to watch it over and over again. Or like the three movies, and for me personally, actually had some kind of influence on the way I wanted to things I wanted to do in my life. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'll go first, and I'm actually going to choose my first movie is Days of Thunder. I know, everybody's like, oh my god, it's a Tom Cruise movie. Yeah, I know, mm -hmm. not everybody likes Tom Cruise. I Tom Cruise is in Days of Thunder? Yes. I don't really understand the hatred, but it's just kind of like something that I accepted. See, I think the thing, I think... Tom Cruise got a bad rap <coughs> when he became a Scientologist. I think he got just, a bad rap when he let everyone know he was crazy. That too. Yeah. But uh, the main me. thing is is that I could care less what religious origins you are or anything like that. He's a good actor. He is. He is really good at what he does on film. My, I mean, my favorite, whether my he's favorite, acting, directing, producing, whatever he wants to do. My, my favorite set of Tom Cruise movies is the Mission Impossible movies. I mean, they still make those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and they're, they're really good. good. And, they're, and they're good. Yeah. Like, the, the first one's good. Uh, the third one's good. Uh, the fourth one's good. <laughs> the, I like the, the second the one happened, reasons. I think. Yeah, the second one happened. Well, my thing is, is that the Mission Impossible's movies, I mean, except for the last couple, they didn't, they weren't very, like, hiding the plot stuff, mm -hmm. but, like, that first one had me guessing, almost, mm -hmm. that whole movie. Yeah. And for me, that's amazing. The most recent one had a lot more of that element to it than some of the, the other more recent right, ones. Right, because, I mean, right. the, the Mission Impossible movies became more of just action movies for a little while there, and that... The, the second one was just nothing but an action movie. That It was just kind of garbage at it. Yeah. Um, the third one brought things back and made... like It was it was a good movie. It wasn't like a, a spy thriller movie. It was just a kind of an action movie, but it was good at it. It was good. Yeah. All right, so back to Days of Thunder. Yeah. So Days of Thunder is about a... a, a I'm going to call it a sprint car racer. And those of you who are into racing know that sprint car is not quite NASCAR, not quite IndyCar, not quite F1 car... But they were what they call an open wheel design. So the wheels are on the outside of the car instead of tucked underneath fenders. Okay, I don't know any of this. Um, yeah, this I, so, thought, I thought it was about NASCAR. Hold on. Mm -hmm. He is a he was a sprint car racer that lost his ride due to some stupid unforeseen things that you don't learn about until later in the movie. That gets asked to test drive a NASCAR to be to start a new NASCAR team. So basically a lot of what the movie is is the struggle of a guy who is used to driving a certain type of car to learn to drive a different type so of it's car. it's like the happy Gilmore of racing. Kind of, sort of. <laughs> not really. But the thing is, is that... <laughs> hold on. So, makes you feel like, better? Sprint cars I mean, are really... player playing golf. Sprint cars are really lightweight cars with really, really big tires that you don't really have to worry about tire wear. So wait, what, 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 what makes Sprint different from F1? Uh, sprint cars are normally down on dirt. So what makes Sprint different from, like... Other dirt car sports, um, which I can't remember the name of right now. <laughs> well, they do have other dirt. They have I know, the, I know they do, and, and I can't remember their names anymore. So, well, I, one sprint, one's the one with the big wing on the top. That's a different type of sprint car. Um, it just really depends upon the power of the motor. You know, getting sponsorship criteria. And, well, and the thing is, is then you go to an on tarmac pavement style road racing with smaller tires and a heavier car so it's not just about having a faster car and just getting out there and winning mm -hmm. you got to learn the ins and outs and the technicalities of the way the car runs to keep you from as they say melting the tires or right. or running out of fuel i mean and they're longer races sprint car races are not very long they're normally 15 20 laps and 
NASCAR races are a couple hundred laps, depending on how big the track right. is so and how long the race is. Goes into which how much he had to adapt to strategy and and, and, and figure out a different uh, way to do so that. NASCAR always seemed to me to be more about endurance racing. Yeah. Exactly. And it's strategy. And a lot of people don't realize about NASCAR is NASCAR is strategy. When do you pit? Do you take fuel and all four tires? Do you only take two tires? Do you only, you know, yeah, just you, go in and take fuel? When do you burn rubber? When do you just stay where you are? Yeah. You know? And and the thing about NASCAR is supposed to be is they call it they called it stock car racing. Now, there's nothing stock about a stock car. That's a line from the movie. <laughs> um, but well, the, the thing, thing is, is, they, is they, that used to, they used to have need to, to be, be stock, stock, stock cars. cars. The whole premise behind a stock car is with me putting quotes in the air so nobody on the outside world can see me doing it. But <laughs> quoting around stock car it was is implied in your tone. It was it's the fact that all the cars are supposed to be aerodynamically similar, horsepower similar, and basic setup similar. So right. the chassis so they, they have were... to be basically the same. The aerodynamics of the they, shell on the outside have to have the, the same. The one, the one thing I, I know, I know about NASCAR is it used to be that you had to take a car stock, and that's what you raced. So it was whatever your manufacturer made is what is what you were going to race in. But they changed the rules eventually and basically made it so yeah, every because, every car you, that that gets raced has to fall within a set of guidelines. Well, because Dodge and, Dodge and Plymouth did something that in NASCAR that. Nobody has ever done. When they made the Superbird and the Dodge Charger Daytona, yeah, they made aerodynamics a thing. Mm -hmm. That putting that giant wing on the back gave an advantage to the drivers that were driving those cars. For the first, when those cars entered NASCAR, they were winning all the top four to five places from those drivers that were driving those cars would always win the race because they could go faster, put more power down to the rear tires, because they had that rear ring, to, rear wing to put downforce down. So, then NASCAR's like, we can't do that. We got to make everything even. So no more wing, no more Superbird, no more Dodge Charger Daytona. You know. So then that's when they really started working on the aerodynamics of the vehicles and trying to make them similar. That's about when aerodynamics became a thing. Right. But anyway, back to the movie. So, in itself and why it influenced me. I was just about to ask, like, knowing you personally, I know you're a huge car guy. I've always been into cars, and Days of Thunder was one of those things where they don't go very technically into the cars themselves, not like the Fast and the Furious movies. Or, or yeah. Whatever. Which are all, if you guys don't all know this, the Fast and the Furious movies are wrong about just about everything they state in those movies. Yeah, yeah. What, if, they, if you hear someone well, say something as a matter of fact in a, in a Fast and Furious movie, just know that that's probably one thing that's not about that car. So, well, one, so of the, one of my favorite Drift lines, is, freaking... one of my favorite lines in Fast and the Furious was, we're going to put these shocks on your car so that you have a better chance for the whole shot. Now, anybody that knows cars, a whole shot has nothing to do with drag racing. The whole shot has to do with getting to the first turn and holding your line through the first turn before anybody else. That's the whole shot. Do they do any turns in the first Fast and Furious That's my movie? point. Is <laughs> Seriously, in the Fast and the Furious movies, now suspension does have a, quite, a little bit of influence on whether the tires get traction on the launch. Well, yeah. But that's on launch. That's not considered to me. It may be considered to some shot, people out yeah. there in the world. I don't consider that the whole shot. I've always considered the whole shot getting to the first turn and holding your sh holding your line. Right. But anyway, so just Days of Thunder in, in general. I'm not gonna go too much more in depth in Days of Thunder. I think we've talked a little bit too much. But it had to do with because it was cars. It got me into NASCAR and it got me into just the the basics of what was, cars. Was this something that kind of came along while you were already into that kind of thing? I or started was it something that started it for you. It was one of the things that started the interest okay. in cars to me. Cool. I really had no idea what things were in cars when that movie came out and I watched it for the first time. But the more I watched it, I, I realized that there is a lot more to car racing mm -hmm. than ever seen right. like I, I'd ever known about and then it got me into Rick car racing so gotcha. that's my first movie alrighty so over to Tim and his first movie okay so um, I think 
for my first movie, I'm going to go ahead and pick one that, uh, that everyone in the universe should probably know already, and that's Terminator 2. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Um, oh, yeah. And one of the one of the first things uh, I'd like to point out about Terminator Two, not necessarily my experience with Terminator Two, but just Terminator Two in general, because when I first watched T uh, Two, I was young. I was very you young, were little. Yeah. Um, so I, for as, as long as I can remember, I always knew that you know Arnold Schwarzenegger was the good guy mm-hmm. in that movie. Because <coughs> you watched Terminator Two before mm-hmm. you watched the first Terminator. Right, that too. Um, but for anyone at the time when, when T2 came out that was older than me and had probably watched the first Terminator, uh, yeah. T2 has this weird uh, sort of turnabout, this this twist in it, yeah. where they you, you assume when you first watch Terminator 2 that Arnold Schwarzenegger is the bad guy. That's what that's what they're setting that whole thing up for. That's why he's so, such a jerk at the beginning of that movie. Yeah, he throws that dude on that grill. Right. And you know, he, he, go, he goes into the biker bar. He basically, you know, he runs roughshod over this whole place, everybody. takes yeah. everybody's stuff, and just goes about his day. And you just you just assume he's the bad guy. And they talk about him like he's the bad guy because he looks the exact same as the bad guy from the first movie. And then the twist is he's the good guy. So. A lot of people forget that that's how the movie was originally set up, and then when you rewatch the movie and you know he's the good guy, everything's different because yeah. now you're seeing everything from a completely different perspective. And that was a really neat thing to go from you know you think he's the bad guy to you know he's the good guy, and seeing the differences in all of the scenes leading different... up to when that reveal was supposed to have happened. It's a different movie. Yeah, it's a completely different movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, and Terminator Two actually innovated like. A lot of different things that yeah. you see today in movies. Cinema, and... Cinematography in general. I mean, it, it, it changed. It made things. I can't even think of the words right now. My brain is not working. Um, it, it Showing the liquid metal Terminator and the way it did was so seamless for the time. Mm-hmm. Like, look at other yes. movies from that time. The, the special effects of Terminator 2 were Stands so above, above and beyond honestly, honestly, anything else from that time period. <laughs> when, 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 someone, when someone says that, you know, some of the modern CG, like, when they look at CG in movies, and they're just like, this is just really, really bad. And they, But you can go back to movies like T2 or Jurassic Park, where, where which were the early days of CG, mm-hmm. and you can see how it can be done extremely mm-hmm. well. Because... The Jurassic Park used a lot of CG, but they used a lot of uh, low lighting, and they used a lot of animatronics to, to and help help aid that yeah, CG so again, when they didn't job. have the. But nowadays, when they when they run CG, and you can tell that it's bad, is because they're all they're doing is using CG. They're not using any other tricks. They're not using lighting tricks. They're not using animatronic tricks. They're just trying to, you know, subsist on CG, and you can't always do that. Right. I mean. Jurassic Park had its moments where it did look... I mean, you could tell where they moved from the CG to animatronics. Sure, but it was like the 90s. Right. Yeah. But still, yeah. still truthfully, <laughs> still truthfully, the first, it's, it's the almost, first it's almost 30 Jurassic years ago Park... Now. The first Jurassic Park, to me, was very innovative for what it was. Oh, yeah. definitely. Not, not and the just... Fact, and the fact that almost 30 years ago, you could get that level of quality out of your CG... Yeah. Not just there, there's the, there's not a whole lot of excuses these days that someone can give me as to why someone's CG sucks. Not just the special right. effects it's of that movie. Laziness. Yeah, that's that all it is. Chalk that up to it. It know? wasn't just the special effects in that movie. It was the actual storyline behind it. Right. I mean the, the 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 fact that yeah, plausibly could they get DNA from a a, a mosquito from that period of time? Absolutely not. Trapped. Probably not. <laughs> it'll be complete. It'll be very, very broken if they do. Yeah, because DNA yeah, DNA, DNA it degrades, degrades way faster than several right. million years. Yeah. But the fact <laughs> that they could get years, partial, yeah, the fact that, that they can get partial DNA coding out of it, plausible, a little bit, and having to use, yeah. having to use other reptiles that we know of now yeah, they gotta, to substitute. Well, technically, they, they, they use they use the amphibian. Around. Oh, they did use the amphibians. They, they, they used they use frog DNA. Yeah, and that frog just happened to be able to change from male to female depending upon its necessity. Which right. is why they were able to reproduce all of a sudden. Right. 
Again, though, the story behind it, it took somebody a lot of scientific knowledge to try to figure out is that possible? Oh, yeah, the guy, the guy who originally wrote Jurassic Park, the, the book, not the movie. Right. Um, he did a lot of research and he wrote a lot of other science based based books. We should probably go over some of them uh, after the podcast because mm-hmm. um, that, that might actually make a good podcast later on. Right. But back to Terminator 2. Back to Terminator 2. <laughs> yeah, back to Terminator 2. Um, you know, Terminator 2 was, was just a really good movie. It, it was, like, I, I really enjoyed it when I was a kid. Um, it was, you know, high action, you know, very fast paced. Um, the, the, you know, drama and lessons and things that it gives aren't super complicated or, or yeah, detailed, they're but, they're, but they, yeah. they are, they are good things to learn, you know, and it, it, it was, it was, it was just a really, really neat movie. And, um, uh, can't, I can't remember her name. Um, Sarah Connor. Yeah, but the 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 the, the lady who plays Sarah Connor, uh, I Liz, uh, uh, I, I can't remember her name, but um, <laughs> but you know Sarah Connor in in that movie. When I was a kid and I was watching that movie, I never thought about the fact that she was female, other than the fact that she has to be female in order to be a mom, <laughs> right? Which is is one of the reasons why when people talk about oh we need you know good female heroes in movies is like well then go to the 90s and the 80s we had them there was lots there were, of there them. were a lot of good ones lots of them <laughs> linda hamilton S- that's Sigourney it Lin- i knew it was, i knew it started with an sorry up. i had to ask google <laughs> so i knew i knew it started with an it up. so i was gonna say like lauren harris but <laughs> in, in the terminator realm um, I did. Linda happen, Hamilton sounds like an Olympian. I did happen to see the newest. <laughs> Doesn't it? it does. I did happen to see the newest Terminator. I don't think anybody in this room else has no seen the newest Terminator. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it was actually decent. I mean, now they have screwed up that storyline big time throughout time. Yeah, but that's well, the whole point of what Terminator is: is that after here's, every here's, movie, here's the thing. What I've heard about the new Terminator is I've heard everything from decent. To bad, not awful, just bad. Right, right. That though, that that a very small window there, bad and decent. Right, there's not a whole lot in between right. there. But those, those are that's kind of what I've been hearing. But no one was excited to talk about it. There's a very. I'm not. It's, I, it's not. It's not an exciting. It's not a movie that gets you hyped. Right. You're right. You're right. It wasn't. I mean, and I just happened to be with our older brother. And, oh, I'm taking the kids to go see the new Terminator. Do you want to go with? Yeah, sure, why not? Tell me when and where, and I'll be there. Why? Because I just wanted to go see the movie. Honestly, I, I, didn't know, I, didn't know there was, I didn't know there was a new Terminator until I saw the first review. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's, that's what told me that there was a new Terminator. But, movie. again, back to, the cinema, you know, back to the Terminator side of it, it's still the same kind of basic cinematography as Terminator 2. They have a Terminator in there that's part liquid, part skeleton and the thing is is that at this point though in the storyline skynet is gone and skynet's not the one sending back terminators to do this it's a different it's a different ai te- technically skynet i don't think has been the thing sending anything back since i don't even remember man okay it's, so it's ter- been so long. terminator terminator 3 i think they they pigeonholed it and tried to call it skynet even though it's supposed to be completely different from the original skynet right uh, Salvation. I don't oh, recall don't, them calling it much. We're anything. not going to talk about Salvation because it had one of the worst actors. You let me just talk about Terminator Three, but you're not going to let me talk about Salvation. Mm-hmm. What kind of backwards ass thinking are you? <laughs> well, because so, Salvation has an actor that I really hate in it. So what was? Did the, you watch Terminator Three? Did did is there anyone in that movie you didn't want to bean with a brick? No, you're right. <laughs> No, no, because the chick that played the Terminator, the good Terminator in that one, was actually kind of hot. There was the that chick was named Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, because there was <laughs> no, no, the bad, the bad guy chick, the one that kept chasing him. There was oh. the female Terminator because she was actually. Yeah, she was okay. What if that was her kink? What if she was just like James, beam me in the face with a brick? Would you do it? For her, probably. All right then. Good to know. <laughs> Regardless, uh, and then the. Uh, <laughs> Guy, what was what was the the, the Terminator after Genesis? Something? Genesis, yeah. So I actually kind of like Genesis. Genesis had its moments. It had, it definitely had its moments. That it it was, but it was it was the first instance where they they started to to be all like, well, we'll we'll move away from the savior John Connor thing, uh, and they made John Connor a bad guy. That was the only thing that really that really kind of irked me. 
Yeah. Because I was like, this serves no purpose. Yeah. Well, why? Why did you? Why did you make? Why did you make you John ever, the bad guy when you, you could have? When you could have made, you know, uh, freaking uh, Matt Smith, the guy who whoever, whoever Matt Smith was playing in that movie, because he was playing what the embodiment of New Skynet or whatever. Oh yeah. I, mean, um, I, forgot was, <laughs> I forgot he was even in that movie. Right. Exactly. They they bothered getting him and they bothered making him a important character, but you see him twice. And for those of you who don't know who Matt Smith is, he was one of the doctors from Doctor Who. Yeah, right. He had just stopped being Doctor Who like right before that movie. He is my second favorite Doctor. So anyway, he's everyone's second favorite Doctor. <laughs> we've gone on a couple tangents here. So far. all right, so for Terminator Two is Tim's, and I think it's more because of how good the movie was in the basis. It, it was of just story. it was just a really good action movie, and it kept me entertained when I was a little kid. And no. I don't think anyone can say it was a bad movie. No, it was and, actually. A and good you movie. know, it, it it honestly it got me into a lot of random things. You know, it it, it got me into um, leather jackets. Right, it made, it made it made me think leather jackets were cool. Hell yeah. uh, motorcycles, motorcycles made, made me think awesome. motorcycles were cool, and I didn't stop doing that until I was like twenty. Uh, uh, and I it made still me think, think motorcycles are cool. Mo- most most motorcycles. importantly, and this sticks with me to this day, it made me think shotguns were cool. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, right now I'm kind of aching from right said because shotgun. literally earlier today we went and shot shotguns. <laughs> right. But, but it so it made me think shotguns were cool, and that and that Winchester eighteen eighty seven that they he got that in that freaking in that lever movie. action shotgun, and yeah. that oh my gosh, yeah, uh, that is a shotgun I I want to. Own. That, that is a sweet eighteen eighty seven, and I want one. And the way he used it just made it so freaking cool, right? Like Arnold Schwarzenegger and his little twirling around the freaking cocket was one of the greatest things ever in a movie. There's a little spin it and it cock the freaking thing. I'm like, heck yeah, that is the coolest thing ever. Right. <laughs> so, all right. Devin? Moving on. That's Terminator 2. That's Tim's first movie. Let's move on to Devin. Uh, I guess I'll start. Um, all three of these movies that I chose for this episode had, like, very different influences on me. Um, I'm going to start with uh, the... Uh, the big monster destroying the city influence that I got from just a general topic of Godzilla movies. And uh, mostly whenever I was a kid, I watched like the older ones, like, you know, uh, the good ones, Godzilla, King Kong, Mothra, Hydra, you know, that stuff. And like, what was it? The, 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 uh, the mechanical one. What the heck was the name of that? Mecha Godzilla. Uh, Meta Godzilla. Me- yeah. Mecha. Mecha Godzilla. Mecha Godzilla. Yeah. Uh, I they- mean, like, as a kid, you know, I was really, really young watching these back to back over and over and over again, and uh, like, there's not really a whole lot of substance of it that I remember. But I was obsessed with Godzilla as a kid, Honestly, and like, for me, anything that has to for, do with Godzilla, I'm at least gonna see it. Uh, anything that kind of has to do with a, a big ass monster, I'm gonna be very interested yeah you're, you're super um, big about the kaiju and yeah, yeah you know and i and i absolutely loved the the music that came from all of godzilla as yeah. a whole you know well, like, i mean godzilla is very iconic i mean if yeah. you really look at it from mm-hmm. our discussions of a couple of books from the books versus movies episode in um the book version of uh ready player one Mm-hmm. One of the bad guys end up with, with a, yeah. Mecha Godzilla. a Mecha Godzilla, yeah, and, and I love that part of the book. And <laughs> they even showed in the in that in that book, I shouldn't say showed, but like until that that monster was so humongous, some of the bigger some of the bigger mechs that they were able to get from the mm-hmm. the winnings of whatever, right were way smaller than this Godzilla was. It was taking multiple of these giant mechs that these guys were using to even try to take it down, yeah, and exactly. they weren't doing was, nothing to it. Yeah, for me, it, Godzilla was always just so menacing. So, for like, that's what that's what drew me toward him. Is this yeah. like, it, holy crap, have you, there's have a you, have you ever seen big the, lizard you ever seen destroying the, the, the city. You ever seen the right original now. Godzilla movie, the very first one? Probably not. Maybe I don't know. I mean, like I said, honestly, I was... it's it's probably it's probably the least popular of the uh, the old school Godzilla movies because it's so much different from the Godzilla movies that got popular. Right. Because it's so serious. Right. Like it is excessively serious. Yeah. Because yeah. Godzilla is supposed to be a, a a living embodiment and representation of 
radiation. Yeah, it's it's. It, I mean, that's that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be I, the 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 embodiment of fear that radiation well, causes yeah. in Japanese. A lot people. of those, yeah, a lot of the well, all of the older Godzilla movies were made in Japan. Japan, right? Well, yeah. All so of them, it was yeah. it was there. It it was it stemmed from their fear of the radiations well, from uh, our yeah. bombs and that's another that dropped cool on them. Part of it that I began to appreciate as I got older. And, you know, looked more into the substance of a Godzilla movie and, and what he is. is like another part, uh, I love comic books. And if you look back, you know, uh, specifically like Marvel, with every decade, there was something that the mm. people feared that they were, you know, and there's there's a character or a group or whatever Captain that kind of covers a, that uh, fear. You know, Captain America is one of the biggest Godzilla, when it comes to that. Because Godzilla, Captain America was built... Around World War Two, to right. fight the Nazis. Exactly, and, 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 and he, 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 he got, got adapted at, at every time period to be the X Men. You know, a fear of mutation through your genetics and stuff like that, again, which you know, has, has been adapted to me. And radiation, well, not, not even not even just that, because uh, the X Men have been adapted to be you know uh, fear and ignorance of, of really just about anything. You know, evolution, uh, prejudice, uh, pre 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 prejudices. Pre you know, yeah. uh, race, racism, uh, yeah, sexism. Exactly. Uh, uh, homophobia and that, um, that same kind of idea is what you know you already mentioned it the fear of radiation and the you know a lot of things come into nuclear wise and some of the newer movies that they've done it's specifically you know they they kind of try and do more about the creation of Godzilla rather than just a you know here's a big ass lizard destroying the city but, uh, and Japanese people are scared but the reason the reason why I bring it up is because the very first Godzilla movie was pretty like dead on 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 the head like if you if you were alive at the time and in japan you would have known exactly what godzilla go. was about yeah. just by watching the very beginning of it um because that first ship that godzilla takes out uh and the the island region that mm. that they that they start on that that island region was where the U.S. was testing their nuclear weapons at the time. Right, and they exactly. accidentally blew up a fishing ship. And by, when I say blew up, I mean they they kind of lit it up hot, and all the <laughs> all the uh, the the sailors on that boat ended up dying from radiation poisoning. So he the the guy who originally who originally made the first Godzilla movie he changed the name of the ship very little bit, but left them in the exact same region, and they get annihilated by Godzilla when it first wakes up and starts heading toward Tokyo. Wow. So like, it, and that was that was in the news like earlier, like a, like only a couple months before before they they started. So, yeah, there was a lot of symbolism. That, yeah. In there. Oh yeah, so it, much. it was it was yeah. a big it was a big thing in Japan. Yeah, oh, again, yeah. it was a lot of the fear of the ra of the radiation of the the a the atomic bombs that we dropped. Yeah, and the testings that the United States was doing out in the Pacific. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of the just. People didn't understand what, back then what radiation was and what it would do. Yeah, so like the now, for it was now we understand. Once, once we, once we and it's still something to be feared. Absolutely. <laughs> but like now we understand a little bit more. I mean, okay, here's but, here's here's the thing. For for a lot of people, when they when they think about you know radiation, like how couldn't they like well, how could they have dropped these things and left them with all this radiation? You have to you have to remember. Uh, we didn't understand radiation terribly well yeah, at the time. No, it was... There, there are legitimately cases. Okay, they they used to make these things. There were these little X-ray boxes that you could see in shoe stores. Okay, and they you could put your foot in them, and you could actually see like your bones and, and stuff in your feet. Um, and it's terribly unsafe. Well, it's yeah, extremely unsafe. Are very yeah. The uh, radiation needed for extra. There, there's a lot of radiation for that. And there is there is a legitimate case of someone of a, a child who, you know, got left there by an attendant for too long and it melted part of their foot off. Oh my gosh. Right? So they didn't understand that much about radiation. Yeah, Definitely I mean if you not. do go oh back to if you do go back in that time and, and really do your research on it, they really didn't understand radiation. They didn't understand was, why people were getting sick and what was happening mm -hmm. to their bodies right. after being exposed to it. Like to the uranium <coughs> or the plutonium or whatever they were using, they didn't understand what it was, so yeah, they didn't know. They they didn't even create a lot, these of, a lot of the, a lot of the main reason why we know that radiation is harmful to us is there. I can't remember her name. There was 
a scientist. She accidentally killed herself with radiation. Oh God! What is her name? Uh, she she was very famous. Yeah, because uh, they talked about for, her. Mostly for discovering that radiation is bad yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. um, they talked about her. On her. Right, <laughs> and also the the extremely high prevalence of leukemia in certain parts of Japan after the bomb was dropped right. led people to to you know start going. We only get a, you know these high you know cases of leukemia in. You know, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Yeah, highly radiated areas. <laughs> so maybe it has to do with, with the radiation. Right. And that's... So, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say that, you know, dropping the bombs was a, was a good thing because we discovered radiation. Yay. And, yeah. And now we know. Wonderful. You know, but I'm, I, I am, I am going to say that it, that is something that came out of it. So, yeah. I mean... Yep, and exactly, and that's why we have Godzilla now today. Exactly. Of what we did to Japan. Good job, America. Right. <laughs> what is it? All um, right. So do we do we want to move on to uh, Mr. Harrison here? Curie. Madame Curie. Yeah. Madame Curie. Yeah, that was. So yeah, right? that's right. The the scientist that discovered. Yeah, uh, Madame Curie. Uh, I mean, I don't know what her first name really is. Polonium two eighty six or something. Yeah. But just Curie keeps coming up as I as I do a search for it. But yeah, I mean, there, yeah. So Godzilla's great, great because not only was it like influential to you, but really it, it showed it, was, it showed a lot of the way that era. It in, was significant to what had happened right. to that, you know, to which Japan. Honestly, which is that's one of the reasons why I think the modern day Godzilla movies don't do as well. Yeah, because exactly. they try they try and capture some of the the, the they, formula of the early Godzilla movies to try and start a new series so they can start going through some of the other and stuff. It just never but works. It's just <laughs> not. It's just not. I just remember as relevant really, today as as it was really back bad. Then. Exactly. The really bad it Godzilla movie from the nineties, and I just remember that freaking um, commercial that they had with Taco with, uh, Bell. Ferris Bueller in it. Yeah, they with, uh, they had Matthew uh, Broderick. Broderick, but I the only thing I remember is that Taco Bell commercial with the freaking little Chihuahua. Yeah, and he puts like tacos underneath the box, and he keeps saying, "Here, these are these are these are these are." Yeah, I love here. that. Commercial. And then also, uh, how hear, good were Taco Bell boom, commercials in the nineties? Boom, though? boom, <laughs> and then his fa my favorite line is, "I think I need a bigger box." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was one of my Taco favorite commercials, commercials ever. Nineties, the they were so good. Um, but anyway, great, great. Great Sweet. choice Thanks. there. I'm glad that, that was actually a really good. I I was unsure how that was going to go, but there's a lot of things to yeah. talk about in that there in is. that topic that people don't really think about. You know how how important it it, it was right. for the time too. All so, right. So Harrison is being Harrison and doesn't want to talk today. So we'll go back to me. We'll get back to him. He has a movie, but we'll get back to him. We'll let him talk. Oh wait. Us. Well, I think, I think we should go to Harrison's movie. I think we should go to Harrison's movie. Want to go to Harrison's movie? I think we'll we should go to Harrison's, Harrison's movie. movie. Okay. We'll go to Harrison's movie. Harrison's I've got three movies. I just don't know if I can really add to the conversation because I have not seen any of the movies that you guys have at all. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> you should. You should probably like. Watch, have you seen watch a movie sometime? Have you seen the movie it's that not... that you've chosen? Have you, have you seen, seen that... Have you seen a movie? Have you, do you know what a movie is? I do know what movies. Are. Okay, that's cool. all right. So this movie came out when I was like eleven. Okay. Uh, so yesterday. So it's about the yeah. It's <laughs> it's kidding. about this guy who uh, he gets this ball from his grandpa. All right. And uh, he needs to go find six other ones. All right, all right. That what, sounds what's, like a what's, fun movie. what's the name of this movie? It's called Dragon Ball Evolution. Oh, oh <laughs> okay. no way! All right, Dragon I think Ball I've heard Evolution? of that movie, Dragon Ball Evolution. Yeah, you might yeah, have mentioned it a couple times. Maybe a couple times. I don't know. Um, I've heard of it. So yeah, I like, I like Emmy Rossum. She's in that movie. Yeah. Um, okay. I like James Masters. He's in that movie too. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think I've ever actually watched the movie. Uh, Chow, Chow Yun you Fat. are blessed, my Ch friend. Chow Yun, <laughs> Chow Yun Fat's in that movie too, right? Is Chow Yun Fat in that movie? I, I like him. No um, way. I think he played he played Roshi, right? Uh, I'm yes. pretty sure. Yeah, he played Roshi. Um, I I don't know anyone else in that movie. I don't think. All right. Anyway, that's good. Good pick there, Harrison. Great good pick. job. Yes. Good job. So, so we'll go to my next movie. Um. Again, it's another Tom Cruise movie, and oh, all right. I'm sorry. We got a theme here going. No theme here. Just the f two movies that influenced me growing up. Mm -hmm. It kind of ages me a little bit because a lot of the movies that I chose are back from the '80s. Bro, I just picked Godzilla. From well, <laughs> Godzilla <laughs> was big. Godzilla white, wasn't man. only big when you were younger. 
it was big when everybody was younger. And okay, I can this, say that. This is probably. And I can say that, and it'd be true. What little boy doesn't love a giant ass? <laughs> right. It's like it's just cities. basically a, a mutated T Rex. I mean, come on. Yeah. Cool. Dinosaur cool. basic. Yeah, that's basic all you dinosaur. need. I'm there. So my next movie was Top Gun. Now, the the movie itself, I think, because of the way it was filmed and the way things were made with it, were crazy and awesome all at the same time. Because the only way. That, um, Scott, what's his first name? Tony Scott? Tony, the, I don't know. I forget his name. But the only way he would, the director, producer guy, I think it's Tony Scott. The director of Top Gun. Yeah. I didn't didn't even realize it had had a director. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I can talk after that one. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> I broke the podcast. You broke the podcast. <laughs> Say what you will about the rest of it. That that was necessary yeah. right there. That was hilarious. So yeah, so the only way he was gonna Tony Scott, see I was right, his name was Tony Scott. Congrats. Yay, what, what, what else did he do? Name. What else did he do? Oh god, I don't know. You make me look that up too. Yeah. What? Um. He, Top Gun two. Did Did he do Top Gun two? <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's doing Top Gun two also. Um, what other movies did Tony Scott do? Uh, True Romance, Man on Fire, Unstoppable, Top Gun, Enemy of the State, Deja Vu, Crimson Tide. Um, okay, Hell some of these are actually good movies. Um, Spy Games. He also. Directed Days of Thunder, uh, The Last Boy Scout, uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Oh, okay. Um, the stupid A Team movie from 2010. I like that movie. Um, mm-hmm. Prometh- it's not a good movie, but the I like Prometh- it. The Prometheus movie from 2012, which is a remake of an old. Um, the Prometheus? Grey with Prometheus. Um, I'm pretty sure that's a remake. But anyway. No, it was, it was that was a weird continuation of Alien. Was it? Yeah. I might be yeah, thinking of, I might be thinking of a different movie then. I don't, I don't think it was originally supposed to be a continuation of Alien. He also but... did the movie The Gray with Liam I Neeson it was in 2011. Alien. Kinda, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the one where but I thought Liam I thought, Neeson... I thought Ridley Scott did Prometheus. Uh, this is Tony Scott. Was he like was he co-director or director? Mm, don't know. Are Ridley Scott and Tony Scott secretly the same person? They could and we be. Just I, are they are they brothers out? or something? Maybe. I Wait, don't you know. said he did, he did Taken. No, he did the Gray. Oh, the Gray, the one where Liam Neeson, Liam Neeson has fights fight wolves. wolves like yeah. the whole time. <laughs> it's actually it's a actually new, a good movie. It if is, you it actually watch it, it is a very like intense it. drama movie, and it is actually really good. I love I love the ending of that movie where he like he puts all the little the little. Uh, little airplane bottles between his fingers and ties them on and just breaks them across a rock and is like I'm gonna fight wolves <laughs> yeah. Yeah. iconic what but uh are we about? the gray the gray no like well Top Gun okay so oh yeah, yeah we're supposed to be talking about Top Gun we're supposed to be talking yeah, about Top Gun I'm, I'm so the only way Tony Scott would do the movie is if the Navy would allow him to actually use aircraft carriers and F-14s from that time period, and he actually got permission from the United States and the United States Navy to film inside cockpits, actual planes, and film stuff from the carrier. So the very opening scene of that movie is them launching from a carrier, and the whole first scene is all them from the carrier. And the last scene of the movie is them from a carrier, and it's all basically was probably filmed at the same time, but you know, you get the gist of what's going on. Um, the reason why that movie was influential to me had nothing to do with the actual movie itself. It was the fact that my whole life, from the time I was like three or four years old, I wanted to be a fire pilot. And when I saw Top Gun, I didn't just want to be a fire pilot. I wanted to be a naval aviator. I wanted to fly Navy planes off of carriers just like Maverick did. And all the way up until the age of about 13 or so, I was dead set on making good grades, getting into college, becoming a naval aviator, and joining the Navy and doing that thing. 
One thing ruined that whole thing. And I'll never forget the day that I realized that I needed glasses. Ooh. So, as an aviator... Damn, that's getting real personal now. As an aviator, you cannot wear glasses Ooh. because you pull too many Gs. You can't wear contacts because the contacts will literally go through your eyeballs. So, you needed perfect vision or better than perfect vision to be a pilot. And I was completely devastated when I found out I needed glasses and I could never be a pilot. I can pilot... Yeah, you can't, you can't pilot jets. Jets. I can pilot, like... I could be a pilot for, like, an airline or, you know... Right, you could go get your pilot's license. Yes, I can go, but I couldn't do what I wanted to do and yeah. be a fire pilot. I wanted to be... You know, and truthfully, I would have been <coughs> totally cool with flying a C-130 or flying a C-5, just doing and, something in the Air Force as a pilot. I, I, been I, don't, I don't know if this is true, but someone told me that you also can't be a fighter pilot if you got your eyes uh, corrected Cor with because, laser surgery. Because the laser surgery can be reversed in G-forces. So you have to have perfect or better than perfect vision, and you have to have something else that I don't have that I didn't realize until later... Which is you needed very, very, very good eye-hand coordination. And we've discussed this in other gaming <laughs> gaming podcasts with us, is I do not have the greatest eye-hand coordination. So, yeah. That's how. That's why Top Gun, we don't need to talk about the movie itself. I mean, the movie itself, kind of, if you liked it, you liked it. If you didn't like it, you didn't like it. Tim says he keeps falling asleep during it. Yeah, I have no idea what happens in the movie. Devin has never seen it. and I, I, I assume they fly planes. Yeah. They do fly planes, Seems and it's all based on the Navy. Navy. And it's based on one of my favorite, all-time favorite airplanes, which is the F-14 Tom. I know, I know uh, quite a bit about the general, uh, you know, what it's about, and that's about And it. spoiler alert, Goose dies. Oh, poor Goose. Like I said, I've seen the Family Guy version of it. <laughs> so, does, does Family Guy Goose die? I, probably. <laughs> so so Top Gun for me was not just one of those movies that I like the movie for the movie now the movie itself is very good if you can actually get through it and watch it but for me it had a lot of significance in what I wanted to do with my life outside you know when I grew up mm -hmm. and of course my life was I can't say was destroyed because I got glasses but I was pretty devastated as a child when I found out I needed glasses and I could never be a pilot so for the Air Force or the Navy. But yeah, that's pretty short and simple for my second movie, so we'll go to Tim's second movie. Alright, so uh, my next movie is... Um, the Professional. The Professional, okay. So... I know absolutely the, nothing about The Professional um, is a movie that came about because... Um, Jean Reno is the, the lead actor of, uh, The Professional. Um, his co-star is Natalie Portman. Most people will know Natalie Portman these days as being Queen Amidala. Princess Amidala. Uh, Queen Amidala. Padme. Padme. <laughs> Padme. Padme. Um, and she's been in a lot of other things also. Um, Jean Reno, people will generally know as that one guy. <laughs> um, he's one of he's one of those actors where when you see him, you, you know, know who he you is, know who he right. is, but, but not a lot you don't, of people yeah. know the name. Yeah. He was in a lot of movies. He was he was in every he was in, time he was in a movie. He was he, he was, was in great. he was in Godzilla two thousand. He was yes, one of the the, Fr the French special forces guys. He yeah. was the lead French oh, special forces. Yeah, he was. Exactly. He was. Holy uh, cow! He was he was, he was in, the one of the best parts of that movie. Yeah, uh, he was in uh, an old version of La Femme Nikita, where he plays the cleaner. Yep. And the director of that version of La Femme Nikita is the director of The Professional. And he came up with the idea of The Professional based just on Jean Reno's character of the cleaner in La Femme Nikita. He just decided that he wanted to take that character and like make him into a whole movie by himself. I like it. That was basically the premise. I might have to watch this movie now. It's um, actually a pretty good... I mean, I think I've seen a good chunk of it. I, I vaguely only remember... The pieces where they're in an apartment. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just a lot of the interaction between him and well, Natalie. That, that's Portman. what that's what a lot of a lot of the movie that's is. Is it's just it's just Natalie a lot of Natalie Portman. And the thing is, the and she's young. She's like dude. She's like ten or eleven. Yeah. She's she's, she's very she's very young. And I had a huge crush on her when I first saw this movie too. And she's slightly older than me. Um, by slightly, I mean I think she's like. 
five or six or seven years older than me. Oh, um, so right around the age that I need. Okay, that's perfect. Right. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> so, um, age is no, no I, I first I first saw the professional when I was, you know, the age that Natalie Portman is thereabouts in the movie. So I had a huge crush on her. Oh yeah. Um, but the the movie is is basically you follow Jean Reno and and Natalie Portman as they sort of meet each other and. Uh, hang out and Jean Reno starts taking care of her when yeah. she when she ends up being orphaned um, and his job is he is an assassin for an actual mob outfit yep. I cannot wait to see this movie now um, you would really enjoy it I think you would enjoy it it's it's weird because Jean Reno's character is not a smart man okay in the movie the movie in the movie he is portrayed as being quite slow in the head Okay. Um, like you can tell, like if he really cared about wanting to learn some of these things or knowing some stuff that's going on around him, he could probably know it. But he really doesn't care. Um, so the the mob guy that he works for um, keeps all of his money, right? Like he like and he keeps telling him he's like you know I'm like I'm like the bank, but I'm better than the bank because the bank gets knocked off. Um, and you know, no one knocks me off. You know, it's, and it's like no, this guy. It's mobster talk. Th- this guy just literally rents out his best assassin and then keeps all of the money that this guy earns, and he's been doing it for like twenty years. Right. That's 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 what he does. And um, Natalie Portman through the whole movie, she's like 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 we said, like 10, 11, 12 years old, and she's hitting on him like the entire movie, and he. Like, he understands that that's basically happening, but he also, like, doesn't care. <laughs> so, he just, he, he treats her like, like she's his daughter, and she treats him like he's her boyfriend. And it is a really weird type of, type of relationship. So it's kind of the backwards of her and Anakin in Star Wars. Right? <laughs> yeah. So it's... It, and and the, I, I, saw, I saw an interview with the director, and he, he wanted to... like the, A lot of the reasons why he wrote certain scenes the way that they are is to let people very much know that from, from you know, Jean Reno's character's perspective, none of this is sexual. Like, he is just, he is just the... Like, the, there, there is a person who is a sexual being, there is a person who can be, and then there's Jean Reno way over here on the <laughs> other side. And he is just he is just basically like a block. Like he's <laughs> That kills people. That kills <laughs> like you can kill people with, with a, a block. block. Like exactly. <laughs> shoot, I mean We well, already talked about some can. We already yeah. talked about hitting people with a brick. Right. <laughs> But John Reno, and, and th- I love that movie, and that movie is another movie that got me into a lot of random guns. Um, the Beretta 92s, the, he, he runs a, a pair of Beretta 92s that are suppressed in that movie. Um, uh, and I love those things. I, yeah, there's another movie that... If I, if I was, if I was going to Beretta own 92s. Beretta 92s, I would want them to, to be formatted like that, which is unfortunate because the comps that he has on them aren't made anymore. Um... There's, but, a, there's another movie where somebody runs a pair of Beretta 92s, but they're gold-plated and they're kind of gaudy, but they're still kind of cool. Have you ever seen the movie Face Off? Yeah. Yeah, he runs a pair... Well, when the bad guy in that movie runs a pair of Beretta 92s. Which, uh, so the bad guy, so you mean Nicolas Cage, 10% of the movie? You Nicholas Cage and then well yeah yeah because yeah. because they because yeah. he started out as yeah. yeah he started out as the bad guy and ended up being the good guy and one of my favorite movies lines of that movie is I can eat a peach for hours <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so it the the professional is is uh it's a it's a great it's a great drama movie. Uh, honestly, and it, it's, it sounds weird because, you know, this, this movie that should sound like it should be like this action heavy, sort of awkwardly sexual, weird movie is mostly just a drama. Oh yeah. Um, and Gary Oldman's in it. He plays, uh, he plays the bad guy and it was one of his best performances ever. He plays this weird drug addicted DEA agent that is just all over the place. It sounds fantastic. I, I uh, really it, yeah. want to watch this movie. Yeah, like, we'll it, have like, to find a way to have let Devin watch this movie. We we really do. We really do. It, it is it is an amazing movie. Um, 
So, uh, Devin, your 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 next movie. Okay, uh, my next movie. I remember I was like six or seven, and my brother was watching this movie on a day that like my parents were gone. And my brother's like eight; he's actually like Tim's age, and he's he's like eight years older than me. So, uh, this is the reason why I watched this movie at such an early age because I would not condone letting a six-year-old watch Weird Science. I would. <laughs> But <laughs> most, most people would. Actually, I would condone it because it's one of my favorite movies of all time. My whole family quotes it constantly. I, 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 pro- I probably, I probably wasn't much like older. That, it's like I probably wasn't much older than that the first time I watched Weird Science. Yeah, Weird Science but, is such a great. Movie. Like at, at that time, what, uh, what you have to realize is kids' movies in the '80s were not kids' movies. Yeah, that's, <laughs> exactly. Like, well, like, if you th- if you think about you know like like Monster Squad, Monster Squad by today's standards is not a kids' movie. Well, yeah, by today's well, standards, but by, but by the '80s standard, you gotta that was look just at the group yeah. of comedies that. That were built back in that time, well, starting yeah, I with mean, like the Breakfast Club, right? The Sam Elmo's Fire, well, I mean, 18, I mean, right? I mean, then, I mean, like little, Sixteen legitimate. Candles, right? Um, Actually, no, I mean, I mean, I mean Breakfast like, Club, Sixteen Candles, and Weird Science were all made within a year of each other. Yeah, you yeah. know, and all three of those movies are iconic. They're cult classics. Well, and the one of the one of the actors that plays is in all three is of those in all movies. Three of those yeah, movies. Yeah. Anthony Michael Hall. Anthony yeah. Michael and he he's been in a lot more movies than you think by yeah. the way cuz this yeah, movie yeah, yeah. has like a long list of filmography. He is such a great comedic actor. Was it, for was his it, age. Wasn't he in Edward Scissorhands? Yeah, he plays the bully in Edward Scissorhands. Yeah, the, the, jo- the jock the jo- bully. Yeah, and the that's jo- the funniest shit yeah. to me because yeah. for me... <laughs> he, play, the, he, play, he plays the nerdy the nerdy little kid the nerdy, in Breakfast Club. And then, he, put, then he plays the jock bully in Edward Scissorhands. The well, thing he is played about that, nerd, that nerdy sorry, kid... Sorry, we got really all, loud. Yeah, he played that nerdy kid in Harrison all three of those movies. Harrison will equalize it later, we Breakfast Club, 16 Candles, and... Yeah, weird science. And, he and was that same basic for character. Me, uh, so, if anybody that doesn't know weird science, weird science is a, a two nerdy high school like freshmen uh, that get bullied and beat up. Like at the beginning of the movie, they get pants in the middle in the in front of all the girls in their gym class. But anyways, I remember who one of the bullies were. Yeah, one of the bullies is played by Robert, Robert Downey, Downey Jr. Jr. <laughs> <laughs> so, definitely, if you haven't seen this movie, it's great. Made in 1985, Weird Science. It's got Kelly LeBrock in it. It's got <sighs> Anthony Michael Hall, who you I know you know who this is. If you've Once seen you see him. him, you'll know who he is. But for me, one of the biggest parts that I liked about that movie, like, I'm only like six or seven, but like, I, I was never like, the super popular kid. I was never the jock. I was never, like, even at an early age, I realized that I'm, like, the nerdy weirdo kid. So, for me, from, like, the word go on this movie, I was, I was sympathizing and relating to the two main characters. But, anyway, what, what they do, they make Kelly LeBrock. They make their, a girlfriend On a with Friday their night, they get bored with their computer, which, basically, they make, like, Frankenstein... Bride, yeah, it was Kelly kind of LeBron. it was kind of a very Frankenstein. And she esque. she like throughout the whole movie she like ups their confidence. She gets them laid. She, she has she has magic powers. She, she has magic powers. She creates a group of like Indian biker dudes and attacks the party that she throws for them against their will. Yeah, she she <laughs> she, makes, she makes cars appear and yeah, and they're driving the... like Ferraris and Lamborghinis and stuff oh, yeah. running from the cops. Basically, Great she, movie. through the whole movie, is she's just building their confidence. To right. become a more popular, and they end up with, with the two popular the two girls, girls that they wanted from the very beginning, right. and who are the girlfriends of, of the, the two bullies, bullies that yeah. we're picking. Up, you they know, end picking. up with the so two for girls. me, it's like the perfect storm of a of a nerdy eighties movie. Oh yeah, uh, uh, you know, one about of my favorites, a, a teenage yeah. nerd, you know, and that's why for me, but it's. One of my favorite. I movies always of all forget. Time. I always forget until I actually sit and watch the movie that Robert Downey Jr. was in that movie. It's so weird to see him as Iron Man for as long as we've seen yeah, him as like, Iron Man. Go back and then and watch, watch this movie, and he's a young high school bully. Yeah, he's and, young, and, and it's like, oh my god, it's like Robert thinking, Downey. Jr. I don't know for anybody that knows Robert Downey Jr. and maybe hasn't seen this movie other than just Iron Man, but like, I'm talking like. Pretty fluttery eyelashes and like probably wearing makeup in this movie. Like, yeah, it it's oh, worth it just the, for seeing yeah. Robert Downey Jr. play he was this the character typical because it's D-bag. so funny. 
He was the yeah. typical D bag from the eighties. Oh yeah, he was it. He wore those weird coats with scarves and the yeah. fluffy big hair and dude, yeah. he was. Uh, uh, if he you was if it. you if you convince Robert Downey Jr. to <coughs> to shave, I don't think he'd look that much different than he did in Weird Science. <laughs> yeah, just like a couple more age lines. But yeah, yeah. <coughs> Weird Science for for me was it it wasn't <coughs> Weird Science that. I, I wish I had thought about this, but Breakfast Club was also one of my yeah. But I, I'm, that's a me, very honorable mention. For me, for I do me. really love the Breakfast yeah, Club, I but I didn't. I didn't actually. I didn't actually started. watch. I didn't actually watch Breakfast Club until I was in right. high school. I had seen uh, Weird Science and like Sixteen Candles first, and like I don't really like Sixteen Candles as much as the other three because it, it's more of like a, a chick flick. <laughs> But there are some great lines in that too. Are you kidding me? I sleep underneath a duck's dong or whatever the line is. Great. There's some great stuff from all those movies. Um, but anyway, we'll go ahead and move on to Harrison's, to Harrison's next second pick. movie. Harrison's second movie. All right. So <laughs> this movie really uh, it changed my life. You know, it's got a beginning, middle, and an end. Okay. All right. As not all movies can do. say that. Actually. Yeah, not all well, movies that, can say that. That is true, uh, you know. Sometimes you don't know where it ends, you know. So <laughs> what? What's this movie about? So it follows the basic structure of most things. You know, there's a hero that has to go out and achieve a goal. All right. right. All right. And along the way, he meets several people that help him get to the goal. All right. This this can't be said about most movies, by the way. Yeah. No. Yeah. Definitely not. I've, I don't think I've ever seen a movie like what you're describing right oh, now. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so, uh, I assume he's got some kind of uh, love interest and uh, like a lovable team of, of misfits. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So, some, some, uh, so what, what's the name of this movie? The movie is called Dragon Ball Evolution. Okay. Oh, all right. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think I've seen that. There, I think there I've heard were it. some movies that were supposed to come after it, but it didn't pan out. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, so basically, uh, on his 18th birthday, Goku receives a mystical Dragon Ball as a gift from his grandfather. There are only six others like it in the world, and legend has it that whomever possesses all seven will be granted one perfect wish. Oh man, this sounds like a great movie. When the arrival of a dark force triggers a tragedy, Goku and his companions are propelled into an epic quest to collect the seven Dragon Balls and save the Earth from destruction. All right. Wow. It sounds okay. like there's some quality acting in this movie, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's really good. It's so, got a, uh, let's see, it's got a 15. <laughs> nice. That's what you want, on, right? 15? Uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. 15%? Okay. Uh, it's got a 2.5 on IMDb. Nice. Out of 10. Out of 10. That's a, a it, stellar movie. That's quality, that's man. That's that's right up there on Metacritic. It does have yeah, and for anybody that's seen Shameless, it does have two of the main characters from like the first four or five seasons are the two main characters of this movie too. And oh, that can't be that can't be that bad then. Right. I've actually and the, had, the bad guy the bad guy is played by the same guy who uh, who plays uh, Spike from Buffy. Oh, all right, yeah. James oh, Martin. there you go. Hey, nice. it's also going to be shown on TV at 3 a.m. on Encore <laughs> East at on Wednesday, February 5th. All right, so clear right. your calendars and your schedules, everyone. Right, so I mean, if you're if you're you know if you're wanting to check that movie out, that'd be a, a good a good time to go ahead and do that. Right. Uh, set your DVRs. Yeah, yeah definitely, absolutely. definitely. I'll I'll definitely check I'll, that I'll out. Queue up my VHS and I'll yeah. record it and then watch it. There later. you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. I'm going to record it over my Rugrats special. Oh, man. Oh, how dare you? Well, well I mean, it might be worth it. This is Dragon, well, I mean, Dragon Ball Evolution yeah. we're talking about. It, depend, it depends on which Rugrats special you're talking about. Are we talking like movie. Go, the the original movie with, like, Dill when he become, when he's born? Yeah. All right, that's that's a good when one. When they go to, like, oh, it wasn't, like, Godzilla in that movie? Godzilla. Reptar. Yeah, Reptar! Reptar, yeah, basically. Reptar, same yeah. thing. Same thing. Yeah. Reptar! Reptar is significantly less radioactive. Yeah, significantly. Significantly less, less yeah. radioactive. You know, paper clips and uh, paper clips and rubber bands. Right. You know? R- Reptar. Reptar is weird because it it basically Godzilla plus Barney. Yeah, and that's how it felt to me too. It's it's, it's like it's like Barneyzilla. It's yeah. like yeah. 
the Barney version of, of Side Godzilla. Note. I think that I I I can I think we need get a podcast down with that. about cartoons. We can get that. Ooh, that's a great idea. I can sit and talk about Phineas and Ferb for a while. All right. Continuing on. So we got on. one more movie each from all of us. So my last and final movie is a very obscure movie. I think maybe only one other person in this room has actually seen it. And it's the movie called Best of the Best. Oh, I love Best of the Best. Oh, I love not, that movie. I'm not even sure. You've never seen it, have you? No. 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 Okay, <laughs> so. Best Best of the Best is a movie that everyone should watch. Yeah, it is, it's definitely got it is, a, it is a movie about determination, hard work, teamwork, yeah. uh, forgiveness, getting, revenge. Getting it, through hardship. Yeah, it I is. Mean, so basically it's about martial arts. It is a martial arts movie. Okay, fully cool. from the beginning to the end. Yeah, it's about... It's, it's, not, it, it's not what you would traditionally think of as a martial arts movie. So it's not like a kung fu movie where somebody, you know, you have... Are you, you know, we're not talking like Karate Kid here. It is kind of Karate Kid-ish. It's closer to Karate Kid. Are you Kid. guys <laughs> describing Dragon Ball Evolution? No, okay. So it, it's it's closer it's closer to Karate Kid than it is to like you know End of the Dragon. Okay. Right. Okay. So, so yeah, I'll, I get what you're saying. Then it's not like Crouching Tiger, Hidden and, Dragon. Right. Right. Either. Right. No, this is actually about a the United States putting together a karate team to take on South Korea, who is a very Taekwondo based country and when they take their martial arts and their taekwondo very very seriously yeah it, so, it, is, it is it is basically it is a, a tournament yeah right? okay so it is kind of a tournament but the point system yeah. you really have to pay attention to it's, understand a, it's, a, it's a team system. it's a team based fight so okay gotcha. and it's, it's a team of six five, five? It's five. A team of five and the points you accumulate in your match will add up with the Ma- every right. other match, the, whatever team has the most points at the end. So each individual match, they have a winner or loser, but the winner or loser of each individual match does not completely affect the outcome of the end of the turn of the tournament. Right. Okay. But it's was, an accumulation it, uh, of points was, of all of them. I think it was the the third the third bout where they tie and they have to do the tiebreaker. Right. So that was just to see who won that match, but really it was just the three points that each person put up on the board right. that accumulated for the team. Um, so the United States has to put together now, we all know the, the basics of like Asian culture and everybody's very disciplined. Everybody's very, you know, yeah. and they kind of show that the United States trying to get them to even work from around the country. They all have different backgrounds. Yeah, they all so, have different. Yeah. So they so got to learn to work as a team. We should, we should go, we should go over how the teams were built. So the Korean team was already built. They had been a team for years. And they, yeah. they worked together as a unit. Anytime they showed their training, they're always like meditating or like I, I love I love the random scene where that's all in slow mo, right? It's entirely in slow mo where all of them are standing shirtless in the snow, just karate chopping trees in unison. Yeah. Oh that's all in exact precise unison. The second they make contact yeah, and then you can actually see, see the snow falling fall out of the trees the every trees time they, they hit. come down. Oh, that's awesome! It right? is an old movie, but it, 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 is, it is that as opposed to the way that the U.S. team was built, which was just they launched this giant tournament, and the top five competitors from that tournament became a team, and so their teamwork was not so great because this was the first yeah, time I'm all sure of them met. They probably didn't right. like each other. So, and there's a lot of conflict in the United States team between this, that, and the other, and this thing and that thing. But the main conflict to me that I always that always sticks out in my mind is Tommy Lee's conflict. Yeah. So, so Tommy, Tom, Lee's Tommy Lee conflict is that he has to fight a guy from Korea named Dae Han. Yeah. His real conflict is is that Dae Han, few years back, killed Tommy's brother in a tournament just like the one they're about to go to. Killed him, all right. It yeah. was an accident. It was a full contact tournament. So all they're doing is wearing some basic pads. And this is yeah. built in. This was made in the '80s, so it's older padding. So it's not like they have padding now. It's not like the UFC. They actually wore chest pads and stuff. But one wrong move in any full contact martial arts yeah, yeah, could cause death. Definitely. I mean, even yeah. in the UFC, if it wasn't for the refs in the UFC, a lot of the times, some of those guys would be dead. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it happened back, especially back then, when the rules were a little more loose, loose, and refs weren't taught to stop fights or you take 
one wrong step the wrong direction while somebody's making a kick can just twist your neck in the wrong way and you're done. Right. Yeah. So, so the flashbacks... There's only one other person in the movie that knows that Dehan killed Tommy's brother, which is the head coach, who chose Tommy to take on Dehan for this tournament. Yeah. Because Tommy is the best fighter of them all. Dehan's their best fighter of them all. So the whole conflict throughout the movie is this Tommy has to get through this conflict in his brain about being scared to fight Dehan and ending up like his brother. Oh, uh, so he's not really, so he, has, he, he does, not he does want revenge. Oh, he, no, he does. He, he does, does kind of. He's scared. So it's, 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 it's one, it's one he's he scared of Dehan, and two, he's also worried that he's going to try and kill Dehan. Right, okay, I get this, so, I dig this. It's, it's cool. an older movie, so I'm going to spoil a lot of it, because this, to me, is one of the reasons why I love this movie. So, the United States end up ends up losing by one point. Dehan is almost completely crippled at this point and can barely stand up. He can't Tommy, stand up. He, during he, that last, that last he bit, he's does on his stand, knees. No, he's not. He's standing. He can barely... So, Tommy basically took out a knee, and Dehan is literally can't even put up his own guard to stop any shot to come at him. Because the only way they'll start the match again is if Dehan is standing. Dehan gets back to his feet, and Tommy has, like, there's, like, maybe 30 seconds left in the match. Yeah, and he just stands there for 30 seconds. And Tommy has to make the decision that no matter what move he makes will probably kill Dehan. So he, he's... That's he's, how messed up they're, he is. They're, they're, down, they're down by one point. He can make the last hit and... and Possibly kill and, Dehan, and, and he's going to—he's going to be able to win the tiebreaker because Dehan can't really do anything. And the thing right. is, if you get knocked out in the in the match, you lose all the points you've accumulated for that match. So that means the United States would have automatically won. So any point that Dehan has made gets deleted down to zero, and Tommy keeps all his points. So that's—they say that you, the only way to win is to beat all these points or knock him out. Right. And, well. And, I should also point out that the head coach of the U.S. team is James Earl Jones. Yes. Oh, no kidding. Yes. No right. kidding. Yes. How are you so, going to skip over like that? I it's, totally forgot that he was... He, I forgot. Well, the, only, the only reason why I remembered to, to, so, to mention it was because I'm remembering the last scene when James Earl Jones is calling out to Tommy. No. No. Because it's in James Earl Jones' voice. No. Tommy. No. No. And, I mean, like... So, Tommy has to make a decision in 30 seconds whether to... Kill Dehan or hurt him severely, or yeah. to lose the match. And he's and he's conflicted. Like he's he's remembering his brother dying and growing up, right. you know, knowing that he he watched this man kill his brother. And right, because he was there at that match right. when his brother died. He was yeah. a little kid and he watched his brother die. Gotcha. Um, so he ends up losing the match. Tons they end up just like they the, the United States ends up losing by one point. But the the main scene that really always sticks out to my mind in my mind. Is the the Day metal Hunt, the Hunt metal speech. ceremony? Yeah. So at the very end of the movie, they show the Koreans getting the medal for winning the tournament, and Tommy is like basically in tears, and Dehan gets his medal, and he, he can barely and stand. hobbles over to Tommy and says these exact words: "To lose, what is it? To lose a." Uh, and not these exact words. I'm trying to think. Not these exact words at all. <laughs> um, to lose a match in defeat is to earn victory and honor within. And he says, "Your brother too was a great fighter. I deeply regret your loss, and I offer myself as your brother." Oh, nice. So I mean, and then at that point, it just. Me it breaks down. And seriously, just saying That's those words, point. I know yeah, I'm, they, I'm they a guy and I shouldn't do this, movie. but just saying those words out loud almost brings tears to my eyes because it's like, it's, it's a, such a powerful message out of a, a B movie that is just always stuck to me. Like, Dehan understands that mistakes happen and Tommy understands that mistake happens, but it was, it was the, um... It was that whole speech at the end that just shows honor, the honor of what Dehan is, yeah. and and all the and he actually gives the medal 
to Tommy. To Tommy. Okay. All yeah. right. And they and there's other movies. There's like four best of the best movies. Now the I other think, ones are okay. garbage. No, here here's the thing. I, I think but, there I think there's four. I I've only seen the first three. Um, first one's great. It's about that the the actual tournament. Yes. The second one I really liked when I was when I was young, and I think I still like it. It's, it's very a, very different. Very very different. As well, probably. Um, um, but it 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 uh, it actually does. All of its drama stuff, like uh, with uh, was it Tommy's older brother, the one who was in the quote unquote car crash, yeah. Uh, when the, and that car crash has a has a name because he beat the he got the crap kicked out of him by a dude. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the second and movie so, has I mean, that, that was that was actually yeah underground that was, fighting ring in um, and Day Han comes back and helps them and, yeah. So uh, it, and that was actually a pretty good movie. And then the third movie, uh, uh, Tommy fights Nazis. Um, sweet. which it's <laughs> sweet, <laughs> and they're not, they, 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 they are Nazis, but not in the Nazis, it's just they're, 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 they're neo Nazis, the Aryan, they're basically ki- the, the KKK, Nation, yeah, neo-Nazi type. Yeah. So he, he, go, he goes and fights a bunch of those people, which was interesting. Um, the fourth it one wasn't was a very okay good too. movie, and the fourth one I never saw. I, I think I saw it, but it's been so long. I, it sounded like a movie I could get into for sure. Best of the best, it's an older movie, so, so the, 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 the movie same? quality itself isn't great. The picture quality itself isn't great. Yeah, because it's old. Some of the it's fight old. scenes, like, in the actual tournament itself, at the end, the first three or four matches were horrible. <laughs> yeah. But when, um, what's his name, Alexander Grady and then Tommy mm-hmm. Lee fight, those two matches, the Tommy Lee Dehan match, some yeah. of the acrobatics within that movie were absolutely phenomenal. Now, the guy who plays Tommy Lee, and I always forget his name, he is a spectacular spectacular absolutely spectacular martial artist yeah which is the reason why he got that part yeah, true. and why they kept making other action movies with him from the best of the best right. series no, because he's a good honestly for what it's worth <laughs> yeah so the, the first and, and second best of the best i would recommend checking out because it's definitely the first the, one if you the, don't check the, out the, the second first, one, the first the first one's the first good one. the second one I'll just if you watch it don't expect anything other than a decent action movie because that's what it is it's not it's not a there not, is some drama in there and it's very a little bit it's and very it is, played out it's drama. done it's done it's done pretty well and um, but it again it's a b movie from the 80s so yeah. it's like don't expect much but at the very end expect to shed a tear or two i okay. swear to god right. you will shed tears i'm down yeah. for stuff like that i'm a glutton for punishment so bring it so and and that that movie was also really weird for me because I'm I'm half Korean so watching USA <laughs> versus Korea and well it was funny because your mother was in the room one time while we were watching it in yeah. the very last scene they don't have the subtitles of what's being said mm-hmm. so when the announcers are announcing stuff your mom was like are they speaking Korean I'm like yeah actually they are and I have no idea what they're saying and she's listening she understood every word yeah and I was like that's really freaking cool. Right. The f- coolest okay, part yeah. was the fact that whole scene did no subtitles, so you have no idea what, what they're, they're saying. saying. You just hear, right? You hear it in Korean, and that yeah. language, yeah. if you've ever heard Korean, is very weird. Yeah. So, but that's my that's my third movie, and I left that for last because it emotionally is one of those movies that I just absolutely love. Mm-hmm. So Tim's second or third movie for Tim. So my third movie is. A movie that I don't know how many people here have seen it, uh-huh. but I know that it it affects James on basically the same level that it does me, and that is The Crow. Um, the Crow, for anyone who doesn't know, it was um, Brandon Lee's last movie. Brandon Lee was Bruce Lee's son. Um, he was accidentally killed on the set of The Crow. Um, but the premise of the movie is... Um, Eric Draven, which was Brandon Lee's character, um, and his girlfriend were murdered on um, the day before Halloween. Uh, Devil's Night. Devil's mm-hmm. Night. Um, they were going to get married the next day on Halloween. Um, and one year after their murder, somehow, some way, using, using movie magic, uh, uh, Eric Draven gets resurrected from the dead to go mean? and get revenge. They actually, the explain, the, they actually they, they explain, explain they explain it all in the movie. The myth of the crow in the movie when 
something so terrible happens that something needs to be done, the crow will come and bring you back as a, like a spirit of as vengeance. a spirit of right. vengeance and to it's, take on. It's a it's a really interesting Fire examination of oh, uh, you know of justice and revenge and it's a just movie. just anger and it's like so responsibility and because he does he does a lot of things throughout this movie and you know when he first starts getting his revenge he's basically ecstatic to go after these people but right. by the time he's he's done like when he when he uh uh you know when he's done and he doesn't know that that top dollar and all of them are still trying to come get him and he's you know he's Actually, no. Okay, no. He he does he does the last scene uh, where he goes to Top Dollar and all of his guys, right? To, to when he jumps down on the table. Yeah. So he does. Which he does that. Don't, if you guys don't know, that's the actual scene where Brandon Lee dies. Yeah, where he's yes. standing on the table. Um. So he they he does he does that, and then after, uh, and his power is gone. Basically, he's just waiting to go back. Mm -hmm. Um. And he doesn't look happy he doesn't look glad that he got his revenge he doesn't look you know satisfied that he's rid basically detroit of all the the big crime lords he just looks tired yeah and he looks done yeah and <clears throat> then he still ends up having to fight top dollar in, in the church and he's got no power left he's got nothing left um it's so, for a lot of people who don't know a lot of the history behind Brandon Lee, and the movie itself became iconic because of what happened to Brandon Lee. I think it would have been either way. I don't know if it would have been as iconic. Yeah, definitely not as, as much so. But Brandon Lee's father, Bruce Lee, also was shot in a very similar way on set of a movie. No. On set of a movie that was actually a movie. What? So the he didn't actually get shot, but in a movie he played. Something happened to the character he was playing. That's similar to that was very similar to what happened to Brandon Lee. So the tower, I think it was the Tower of Death. Game of Death. Game of Death. The very beginning of that movie. There's a scene where the character that Bruce Lee is playing within the movie as another character, because he's an actor within the movie, jumps out and is supposed to do something, and they're supposed to shoot him. Well, within the movie, he gets shot, and they end up having to change his face. I know it's really weird. <laughs> Which cut of Game of Death is this? I don't know. I just remember seeing it. I don't remember. Because Game, Game of Death, Game of is, Death is the, was the movie that he was filming. When Game, Game of Death was the movie that Bruce was filming, filming when, when he died. He died. Um, and he, they had finished about a third of it. Yeah. Um, so there are several cuts of Game of Death. The original cut that came out used almost none of the original footage that they had actually shot because they lost it. They mm -hmm. didn't know where it was. Oh, okay. Um so almost the entire movie is nothing like the original movie was supposed to be because they couldn't film it properly. They had to use a bunch of body doubles and cardboard cutouts and everything they could to try and salvage, you know, this what they basically had like like 10 or 15 minutes of footage. Yeah. Total. Well, so the real thing is is that tragically both Bruce Lee and Brandon Lee died while filming a movie. And there's a bunch of conspiracy theories and things about it. So but. we all know, well, we all don't know, but I've done a lot of my own research because Bruce Lee is like an idol to me. He's an idol to a lot of people. Um, I mean, everybody Bruce, Bruce Lee died Lee from an aspirin overdose. Now, people didn't realize, not even Bruce Lee realized that he had an allergy to aspirin. Well, what, what it was is they, they figured out later that he was taking other, uh, other medication at the time. Okay, there's might be so, a little bit more to it that... But I just know that he laid so, down. Yeah, he was he was taking other medication in addition to, and it had a reaction with the aspirin, aspirin which I think um, called, caused an aneurysm, from what I understand. Caused brain swelling. Brain swelling. I knew it had something to do yeah. with the brain. So in uh, they from the autopsy of Bruce Lee, they they discovered that he had his prescription pain medication, 
um, the aspirin and marijuana, strangely enough, in his system. Uh, which, back then, who didn't have marijuana in their system back then? Well, in Asia, not very many people. Yeah. But he wasn't strictly in Asia, though. I he mean, was in China at the time. He was in Hong Kong. I know he was in China at the time when he died. What I'm saying is, yeah, like, but he, spent, he would system jump for back and days. forth. But anyway, so Brandon Lee's death was... I've done a... I've done some extensive research on that too, and for those of us who knows guns, they figured out what happened. Yeah. Okay. So they have these things called bullet dummies. Where they, well, no, no, bullet dummies. So they right. look like real bullets but have no gunpowder in it. Yeah. Okay. But some of them were put with real primers in it, so no go, yeah. no gunpowder, but with a primer. Somehow or another, one of those bullets got loaded into one of the prop guns used for that last scene, for that scene on the table. And it was loaded into a revolver. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, most, the rest of them were filled with blanks. What happened was, is when that primer was hit, the bullet that was, that is actually put in the front of that, lodged itself into the barrel, and and then it rotated. Okay. In in the the world of firearms, we would normally call that a squib. That's the word I'm looking for. A bullet dummy or... Yeah, so the... It's a it's a squib load. So normally speaking, if you if you like were to actually load ammo yourself, so like you put the you had your casing and your bullet and your primer, and you forgot to put powder in, ninety nine out of a hundred times, the bullet will make it out of the barrel. The primer has enough force, generally speaking, to push the bullet out of the barrel. It's not going to go much further than that. Um, it's basically just going to fall out of your barrel. Yeah. Right. Um, but Every once in a while, they will get stuck, and that's the reason why they, they tell you that if you if you are shooting, and you feel the load, you know, it, if you feel it's different from, from normal, you're supposed to stop, and you're supposed to check your gun. Um, and mostly it's for squib loads, because you can get barrel obstructions. Right. So, the next round in the barrel, or in the... The cylinder. The cylinder... Turned and it was a blank. Now most blanks have a uh, almost a full charge of gunpowder, so it looks no, like it's, it's not a full charge. It is around five to ten times more than a full charge. Okay, so I didn't know that. Yeah. But it's just a crimped front, so it doesn't actually shoot a bullet, but it makes the all, bang. All blanks, all blanks are supposed to do is look flashy. So they they put five to ten times more powder in them, so you get that big. Flash fireball out of, out of so out of since a blank. there was a there was a a bullet in the chain or in the barrel at the time when the blank went off it actually shot the bullet out and hit Brandon Lee. So was it the fact that Brandon Lee, you know, what happened with him was that what made you, what made that movie such a big deal to you or? Um, no, actually, a lot of a lot of what it was was. Because I know that movie is iconic and in of itself, even you know, without the You're right. the tragedy of what happened. I, don't, I mean, my so, dad loves the movie. I hadn't, I've met a lot of people. That okay, love the, the first movie. the first time I saw the movie, I didn't know any of that stuff about Brandon Lee. And I right. still love that movie. Right. So I didn't learn any of that stuff until after I had watched that movie same a couple of me, times. Yeah. Same for me. And I, I enjoyed the see. I was movie. around when the movie came out in theaters, so I knew. I knew. That Brandon Lee had died during that. Apparently, we weren't around when the movie came out in theaters. We were... I was around. I was a little kid. Yeah. Well, okay. Let me. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, you I'm might not have been around. Yeah, I think the movie came out in '93, '94. Yeah. I, I don't think I was around when it came out. Actually. Yeah, so I was I like, I was like five or six <coughs> when the movie came out. Um, and so, I, I watched it a number of years later. I think I was nine or ten. Yeah, and I actually saw it in theaters. Um, the movie itself is very it, it again because of who I am and how I've been raised. The whole revenge and revenge for your love and right and, and the crow the crow got me into a lot of especially the the Korean revenge films, <laughs> which the Korean revenge films it, as a as a, a genre is amazing and some of them are like they they it's a weird genre because some of them are completely different from each other. Oh yeah. You know, Old Boy is nothing like the man from nowhere. Neither one of them are, are like, you know, Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance and, you know, it, or or I Saw the Devil. You know, like, they're, they're all very different movies. Yeah. Um, I mean, 
uh, we could probably, me and Tim could probably sit and talk about The Crow for its own podcast length. Right, but I, I would like to get to Devin's third pick, because I'm yeah. excited for this one. Yeah, so, so be, before I get into my pick. I say, before before Devin gets into the why he chose it and everything else, is like, there's a couple movies that all three of us wanted to do and have as our own. Yeah, we didn't I want to do a lot of overlapping. Say. So, best of the best, me and Tim agreed that yeah. it was going to be mine. The Crow, we agreed, was going to be Tim's, even though it's also part of us. But this movie that Devin is doing is agreeably between all of us. Right. I, I actually I actually told everyone that I was going to pick this movie. And then I got until Devin Until Devin was, was just like, no, it. I wanted to pick that. And, was and like, then okay. he said, okay, I'll pick The Crow. <laughs> right. So, this movie is actually iconic for all of us. So, go ahead, Devin, and tell him. This movie, um, the reason why it's iconic to me is because it's actually, like, the, uh, the, the action-adventure weird fantasy movie that got me into all the other action-adventure weird fantasy movies. And that is Willow. Willow is an amazing movie. It is iconic. Yes. I actually know somebody that's name is Sorsha. And when I first ah. figured out that her name, my first thought was like, were you named after the girl from Willow? And she said, yes. And I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Definitely. Yeah. Willow is iconic without a doubt. You know, Warwick, Warwick is freaking. Warwick Davis. Yeah. yeah. As no, Willow kind of is your Val, main character. Val you Kilmer's in it. Val Kilmer plays Mad Mardigan, who is an absolutely great part of the movie. You know, brings a lot of humor. Yeah. There's a Mad, lot of Mad, Mad, Mad Mardigan. If you if you want a, a basic idea of, of the kind of character that Mad Mardigan is, um, think like and we, we were talking about this earlier. Like he's kind of like Aragorn, except. Like, more like more like Han Solo. He's, yeah, <laughs> like if, if, yeah, if, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know what? Holy crap! Absolutely. That is. Yes. If, if Aragorn went the route of Han Solo, he would end up being Mad Mardigan. He, like he, he's like he's like you, the stepdad that slaps your mom's ass in front of you, and you feel uncomfortable about it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh <my> <laughs> you know, like I mean, the the okay, so. The seriousness of the movie itself, if you take all the comedy out of it, the seriousness of the movie it's is a, very, it, very good. It's a yeah. great movie. It's a good drama. Uh, basically, a lot of... so, Evil Queen is trying to kill a baby who has the magical power to one day kill the Evil Queen and, and stop her it's terrible whole, reign. It's the whole, like... So, you know, it's a typical kind of fantasy thing, you know, where the the yeah. the, the, the powerful one wants to kill the... The more powerful one before it becomes more powerful doesn't work because you got a halfling Nelwyn known as Willow who is played by Warwick Davis to protect him who you know he's learning how to become a yeah. wizard he's he's going on this huge adventure what's weird about about this this movie being a fantasy movie is it takes okay a lot of people will, will say that it reminds people of you know like the Lord of the Rings but if if you think about it, the 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 Nelwyn society, when people look at them, there's like okay, they're dwarves, except they don't they don't act like dwarves. They're like dwarves that act like right? hobbits, kind of. But at this kind of kind of like, sort of, but not really. Like for, so, um, Willow himself is is trying to teach himself magic, mm -hmm. and he he does he does magic tricks but he wants to learn real magic and the the town that he lives in well there is that has, one has a real a real wizard Where? and he's he's sort of the head of the town follow the bird um and uh every every year at the, it goes at the, the wrong direction yeah, right. forget the bird follow forget the, the bird follow the river <laughs> <laughs> but uh, every every year at the uh, at the end of this festival the prospects which you have to get chosen to be a prospect um will come up and they have to answer a question and it's like, of which finger the, has the most yeah, power right and it's yeah, like this yeah, yeah. this year's question and it's like which which finger on on my hand ha, uh, has you know well, I don't think carries the greatest, greatest power i think he just yeah i think he might just said which finger yeah which finger and because the answer is not the, a finger on his hand right the <laughs> yeah, yeah but um so it, three three guys try and try and figure out and willow's one of them and all of them fail and Willow um, hesitates. Well, yeah. he does. He hesitates completely. But um, he had the right idea. But the, went with the whole the, wrong one. the whole thing is so you have you have the the baby that's supposed to grow up to be stronger than the queen, well, uh, which basically gets Moses down the river. To the, back to that, I thought <laughs> yeah. it was, I thought it was a prophecy that she found that 
this baby will just bring about her death. It has nothing to do with this baby will be powerful enough to kill her. I yeah, think, well, I think I the mean, prophecy was this baby will right. bring about her death. Right. It, the, Either the, way, the prophecy you know, is weird because the 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 fair the the, the fae that are, that were in the woods also say that she's supposed to grow up and, and be ridiculously awesome and things and okay. that's why she has to survive yeah, and, they, and whatnot and it's, so it, I mean it, there's it's there's a bunch of there's a bunch of the movie yeah there, there's a bunch of you know basic tropes that happen so baby gets Moses down the river and uh, Willow's kids Willow's two kids end up finding the baby in in the in the water. Um, right. And Willow freaks out. He wants to keep pushing and pushing and right. keep going yeah. down the river. Get that baby out of here. Right. Like, and then he, his wife's he, like, he what was, are you crazy? It's he's a just, baby. You know, he's just a farmer that does magic tricks and wants right. to be and, a And also, th- this world is filled with a weird sort of racism. Oh, very uh, weird. And Willow, Willow does not Daddy. like... Yeah, Willow does not like... I can't remember what, what he calls them, but um, the full... Like, the, the normal... Hype people. Yeah, right. I can't, he does. He, he does a specific he, term for them, and it's right. a derogative term. Well, sort of. Yeah, because they're they're because he he does he does have some derogatory terms for them, but he also has like and they don't they don't just call them people. They yeah. have an actual name, right? Uh, in the world, and just you know, like like the Nelwins are are a name, which that's not a fancy name that you get it from anywhere else, right? Right, and their derogatory term, the derogatory term for the Nelwins is Peck. Peck, uh, which. <laughs> Uh, Mad Mardigan Mad Mardigan, saying, Mad Mardigan calls calls Willow nothing but Peck for like forty you know, seconds straight. He's just yeah, he's like, Peck, 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 Peck. Right, it's great. Um, but so like there, there's this weird sort of racism throughout this world where like the, the 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 Nelwins <laughs> don't like the don't like the normal hype people and the normal hype people don't like the the Nelwins <laughs> and like the like no one messes with the Fae because no one really likes them they're all a bunch of jerks and like and the the witch you know just hates everything and right. you know they're, they're, all of them are trying to stay away from her army but, but anyway too, the plot like, begins the you know the witch sends. The, Big ass boar rat things after. Yeah, know, these after big the big boar things. After the baby, it, you know, Willow goes on his journey to try and protect the, the baby and get her to where she needs to go so she yeah, can the, be raised. The the, the, the 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 wizard of the of the the tribe ends up looking at this baby and is like, "This baby is important, and Willow will go on this journey to right. to bring her to the the world of the other people." Right. And uh, the leaders he, like the yeah. head wizards of the of the normal piece size people. Inter, right. well, inter- well, no, he, he just he, he just literally says just. Take the baby into the into this land and give it to the first person you see. Yeah, which is Mad Mardigan. Which, which is, is Mad, Mad Mardigan. Mardigan. So enter shenanigans. Right. So he ends up he ends up actually listening and giving the baby to Mad Mardigan, and Mad Mardigan loses the baby. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and the brownies, you know, Willow the brownies in that, hilarious, are absolutely yes. yeah. hilarious. We have a baby. We stole the baby. We stole the baby. <laughs> And it's a great so, movie. So on on the way back to their town, Willow ends up finding you know the stolen baby and <laughs> <laughs> wait a second, what is going on here? Right, and yeah. so there, like there's just all this random crap that happens wow. after that. He finds Mad Mardigan again. And Mad Mardigan's dressed up like a lady, and he's in, yeah. a, in a tavern to. <laughs> Oh yeah, to yeah, hide yeah, from the, to, the, to hide from the, the, the yeah. girl that oh, he was with, yeah. husband. Yeah. <laughs> let's not forget that when he first meets Mad Mardigan, Mad Mardigan is in a cage. Yeah, he's in a cage. He's locked up, and he, he keeps <laughs> insisting that he is the world's greatest swordsman. Yes, that's right. Don't forget um, about that. So, I, which is a total... and some of, some of the some of the some of the the creatures that you see, like when you when when you hear the word troll. Right, what you think like giant big? Remember, remember those those little yeah, things that are yeah. barely that are barely yeah. willow size? They're just angry they're and like furry. The troll of Central the, Park troll, yeah, right? <laughs> and they're they're actually trolls in this world. And he, uh, Willow fights one, and, and right. you know, well, he, th- he throws like an acorn at it, <laughs> right? <laughs> turns into stone. Turns or into stone. Yeah. There are a lot of really cool things in so, the, in the movie throughout. And, there, and there's willow. a there's a there's a good witch that was turned into a bird, and. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, and, the good yeah. oh my god, she takes like so many different yeah. things. Like, I am whole... young and beautiful and powerful <laughs> and, and she... the whole time because Willow has this wand and he and he, he keeps trying to turn this witch back Tur- into yeah. a human Tur- form. Turns, her, turns her into a lion and an ostrich and oh, all yeah. this. <laughs> all yeah, kinds all of kinds of fi- fi- finally ends a up goat. 
finally ends burn. up turning her turning her human again, and, and she, she is an like, elderly yeah, woman. And she's like, and and, and she's like, I thought you said you were young and beautiful, and she's like, I guess it's been a lot longer than I thought. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah, it's such a. For me, Willow was one of those movies that really got me into the fantasy genre of everything. Yeah, books, yeah. you know, your books, movies, your, yeah. anything, anything fantasy. Willow was one of the very first things to have me to throw me into that realm of what it was. Right. So, so Willow has a a, a a huge place in my heart because of I still love fantasy novels. I love. Lord of the yeah. Rings. I love, you know, Game right. of Thrones. It's, that it's that like style. A, it's a it's like a obscure gateway fantasy movie. Yeah. You know, but it is so it is so good. You know, if you can look past the fact that it's it's you know not greatest cine- cinematically because it's not very new. Yeah, it's you know? it's it's a George, it's a George Lucas film. It is a George Lucas film, which you know. Explains, oh, I totally forgot that it was a George Lucas film. It is. Yeah, which explains why you know Warwick Davis is the main character. Yeah, because yeah, Warwick. Because as we all know, Warwick Davis was the main character in all of George Lucas's movies. And R two D two. That was that. That's not correct at all. Did he play R two D two? No, Warwick played he, one of the. He did. He did play an Ewok. <laughs> oh, right. He was one of the Ewoks. Was that's it? Right. I, don't I don't remember which Ewok. And he, and he was also someone in Episode One. Yeah, just as someone. No, they He's showed they the, when they panned around the the Senate, he was right in one of the Senate. But if you also look at through the Senate, there's ET in the Senate also. Well, also yeah. he's also in uh, the pod race scene of the first one. He's sitting yes. right next to uh, yes whatever yeah. Watto. Yes, yeah. he was he was. There but too. anyways, uh, Harrison's got one more movie he can talk about because he said he had three and he's only told us two, so. What yeah. you got? So when we'll end on we'll end on Harrison's All right, so, movie. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys have seen this movie, uh, but this really probably one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Uh, and is that it, why it affects you so much? Yeah. Yeah, you don't forget it the worst really movie affected you've ever my seen. childhood. You know. Uh, so this movie came out in 1993. So it's probably not what you thought I was going to talk about. Oh yeah. Probably not. Because I remembered it while we were talking. Uh, the Super Mario Brothers film. Oh, oh man. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. I guess you Oh, my God. Did it have yeah. dead, like, Leguizamo <laughs> in it, didn't it? Yeah, it was John John Leguizamo, and, um, I got, I can't remember his name, but he was in, he was in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Uh, oh, did yeah, it really yeah, have? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, what is his name? Um, but yeah, oh my the god! The guy who was... played Mario. Do you, do you I have totally it pulled forgot up? Who framed with Roger right Rabbit? Now. It was even a thing. Bob Hoskins. How great! Bob Hoskins. Yeah. Hoskins. So, oh my uh, god! But he and you know, God rest his soul, because he passed away not that long ago. Um, but uh, he was he was the detective from Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and yeah. he he got talked into being Mario. He knew nothing about Mario. He got talked into it by his kids. So such and a so when he movie. D- throughout throughout the filming, he did he was just like all of this seems ridiculous and stupid, but I know nothing about the video game, so I guess it's all accurate. <laughs> and he didn't, he didn't know until afterward that it was just completely ridiculous. It was complete trash. Yeah, it was absolute and, trash. And dude. and it, so, but I, I have a feeling that if 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 Bob had known. Exactly how far away that movie was from the source material, he would have said something. I have faith in in the spirit of Bob uh, Bob Hoskins. He, he's to, he, to know so, better. Yeah. <laughs> so that movie was. Or to uh, do better if he knows better. Like we all know that. Now, pretty, and the pretty Mario's sure. that Mario just had this weird ability to jump to the freaking moon mm-hmm. without anything, and then he ate mushrooms and grew. Then he would like run into flowers and be able to throw. Fireballs and then take in stars and made him invincible. Right, all, well, they, which, they all of which is to... all of which is ridiculous. No, it's not possible. <laughs> but like in the movie, like they didn't even give him the, like the ability to jump was all mechanical. They had the, yeah, the rocket these, boots, the rocket <laughs> boots, and then <laughs> don't don't get me wrong. Fireballs, they shot out a little like flamethrower thing, dude. Right. It, it was. The, it was the, the, it, it, it was shadow the, or whatever the, the, what the, all the, of the, what the, Mario was. The, the best things <laughs> in that movie, two things. Okay, Chick who played Daisy was super cute. Mm-hmm. She was right. That was that's one. Okay, 
No one, no one can deny this. Two, the bomb was accurate. <laughs> True. Yeah. Tiny, tiny little bomb with giant, giant ass explosion. That was accurate. Everything else, what the hell were these people on? So like, on, was... on the note of Super Mario Brothers, the only one thing that I liked about Super Mario Brothers back then was the Super Mario Super Show. Do you guys ever watch, remember that seeing was that? Oh action. man, I love that. That was one of my favorites. The, the little live action with uh, what's his name? It was uh, oh um, snap, yeah. He was uh, he was a wrestler or something too, wasn't he? Like he used to have the rubber bands in his beard and. Uh, you got me, man. Uh, uh, oh, damn. The, the only the only the only pro wrestling I saw, you know, back back that time, I was watching with you. I was a little kid. Captain, was it Captain? Sam? Yeah, I can't think of his name, but I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah, but they had a little bit of live action before every little episode. They had like two episodes per half hour. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it that was actually great. That was some of the coolest cartoonage that I remember watching growing up. Yeah, was the Super Mario Super Show? The guy that was in the live action part of that show had this commercial, like where he was dressed up as Mario, and it was an anti drug commercial. And it basically he was just like, it was Mario telling kids, if you do drugs, you go to hell before you die. And it's just kind of really funny. Wow. <laughs> that was real deep, real quick. <laughs> That's literally what it's so, don't, don't, don't get me, so don't get me Albano? wrong. Albano, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't he a wrestler? Yeah, he was. That's why. That's how I knew who you were talking about yeah. when you said rubber bands, and I'm like, oh crap, what is his name? Yeah, Lou Albano. Albano. He was. He was Mario. He did the live action bits of Mario with. I don't even know who the guy did Luigi, but they had these little little skits that they would do live action and then they would show a cartoon imagine how you would feel if you were like a little kid you love Mario and then he just tells you that you're gonna go to hell if you do drugs <laughs> before you die <laughs> hey man that'd keep me from doing drugs I don't wanna go to hell yeah, well now I don't you care die. Well, now I don't care I mean, I'm hey, going straight to hell hey, I, I'll die I, 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 I don't have to imagine how it feels because I saw one of those other anti-drug commercials with uh, uh, Rachel Lee Cook in it uh, where you know she's she's like you know this is this is your brain on drugs and then she she goes ballistic with a frying pan and destroys an entire kitchen. <laughs> I and, and I had a super huge crush on Rachel Lee Cook, so I was, I was like, all right, if, if I ever if I ever got my wish and got together with this chick, she will destroy our kitchen every single day. But you know what? It's fine. She's rich. <laughs> All right. you know, so uh, on that bombshell of that, Mario, do we, do we have do we have recommendations? I, 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 gotta oh, say though, that movie, I recommend Willow. I, I recommend Willow. Um, we can do quick recommendations. I mean, we can recommend one of the movies, the one movie of our three that we recommend the most. Okay. So Tim, honestly, um, if I were to recommend one of my three, the one that I think that people. It, that is underappreciated the most, and people need to start watching it. Is probably the professional. I was just I, I was about say that, to yeah. say that's the one that I feel like I'm gonna enjoy the most. Yeah, the, the professional is a great movie. I mean, not T2. enough people, not enough people have watched it, and not a lot of people know this, but uh, Natalie Portman's parents, in order to get them to agree to let her be in the movie, uh, they required that Natalie go through firearm safety training. Oh, that's cool. So. When she was, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old, she went through firearm safety courses, so she knows how all those guns work. <laughs> nice. All right. All right, Devin, your recommendation of one of your three movies? I want to say Willow, but I also really want to say Weird Science, but Willow is, for me, is and the more... I, I do, I do want to point... more better. Well, I do want to point this out. More better. I was, I was talking to uh, Nick, who was on our Game of the Decade podcast... Right. Uh, and I mentioned Willow to him, and he said he had just rewatched Willow on Disney Plus. Yeah, it is so, on Disney Plus. So it is on Disney Plus. So if you have Disney Plus, you, you know can watch you got Willow. That Disney Plus plug. Yeah, watch it. Yeah, definitely watch Willow. If you've never seen it, you better be watching that. Yeah, especially right if you're into like the fantasy action adventure, you know, yeah. kind of thing. It's older. It's all you. You gotta remember, it's an older movie, so. <coughs> Give it a little bit of slack, but man, when you're done, you'll you'll thank us for it. Yeah. So Harrison, so my third movie is about uh, Dragon Ball Evolution. Okay. I you know I, I gotta think recommend a, Dragon Ball Evolution. Yeah, it's my right. third movie. Uh, you know it's, it follows Goku. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Anyways. <laughs> all right. So Harrison's recommendation for you guys to go all go out and watch Dragon Ball Evolution. I, mean, I think honestly, he's recommended yeah. that movie on multiple occasions. You so did. if you guys haven't seen it yet, go watch it. This, and just a reminder to all our fans that this, this podcast is not sponsored by Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> yes. 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 Yet. So my my recommendation is the very obscure movie that I chose that means a lot to me and it, it gave me an emotional boost was Best, best of the, of the best. best. If you've never seen it, if you've never heard of it, it, it like I said, it's a B movie from the 80s, so it's not going to be the greatest movie you've ever watched, but just watch it for the emotional it is, it is side a really It is a really good movie. The, yeah. the actors in it, you you will probably recognize some of them. <coughs> the guy who plays Alex was, uh, he was in Dark Knight. He was. Uh, he played, uh, what was it, uh, Salve, you know, you know, the other mob okay. boss. Yeah, he, played, he played one of the mob bosses in, in Dark Knight. He, he's a really good actor. He was really good in that. He's played in a couple other movies, um, too. The guy, the guy who, yeah, he has. Um, the guy who played Tommy Lee is actually a good actor. Uh, the guy who played Dehan was a good actor. Yes. And J. Dehan. Will Jones is in it. Like, and Dehan yeah, has Dehan has done other things too, other martial arts flicks, outside of Best of the Best series stuff. He's done some other ones too. But Best of the Best is my recommendation for you guys. So, um, on that note, we are going to go ahead and end the podcast for the day. So we'll all say our goodbyes. Yep. Later. And we'll talk to you guys later. Have Make fun. sure to subscribe. Yeah, like, like and subscribe. Like, subscribe, and please, please check out our Facebook. please, 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 please comment on the YouTube video if and you have any thoughts any thoughts good or bad i yeah. will take all the bad comments and all the bad criticisms you guys have yeah. for us so that we can make this better for you suggest yes. i am so. not one of those who's so, going to yeah, take we, a bad we, comment and go cry in a corner because you told us that we i'm suck i'm pretty i'm pretty sure uh, I, I would love to hear some recommendations for absolutely episodes. Or ideas I, on what i we think, think we've we gotten one we've gotten one which so far. i will definitely yeah. we will definitely do and i'll actually the guy who recommend recommended the wrestling um podcast i we will actually bring him on as a guest because he's a good friend of ours um uh, oh, you Devin actually know Ford, who, who left that comment uh Artie. He works with us. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So Artie wants us to do a wrestling podcast, which we will do, definitely. And Artie will be here in the room. Prepare yourselves for that. That'll be interesting. That'll be sure. that'll be an interesting day. But Artie is very intelligent when it comes to wrestling along with Devin. So we will hold a large podcast on our thoughts of old school wrestling and current day wrestling. Current wrestling. You know. Anything in between, honestly. Right. Cause there's, there's, it's going to be a really different way of us looking at wrestling. We're not just going to criticize what's going on. We're going to actually probably talk about how it's influenced, like the first time we got to watch wrestling and what it did for us. And and then for me, why I stopped watching wrestling. Right. Yeah. And for I mean, some of us, why we stopped. But, but anyway, anyway, unnecessary tangent on Facebook and YouTube. Make sure to check that out. If, yes. Well, obviously you're checking it out right now if you're listening and to this. But I don't mind if you guys leave comments on Facebook or YouTube, but I prefer you guys to put them on the videos, and then we will check them out, and we will answer them. Yeah. All right. All right. So we will talk at you guys later. Bye.